Hey folks, hello again. This is another video about the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now I referred in one of my previous videos about my little idea of painting the side panels the same colour as the tank, the orange crush. Now because I'm not a professional YouTuber type and because I don't have editing software and all these things to make it a nice fancy video, I'm going to have to post this process in a series of videos. So it'll be like part one, part two and so on until I've done the job or until I've completely messed it up. And I'll be honest with people, if I do and my project um, is no good, then I'll be the first to admit it. Okay, so I want to spray the side panels the same colour as the tank. Now, the first start of the process was I don't want to trash my panels, the side panels that are on the bike, uh, and then find that, you know, make a mess. So what I've done is I ordered from an Indian seller on eBay some Royal Enfield genuine parts, uh, two side panels. Now, you know, with some reservations, you never know. However, these I got for 48 quid for the pair, and it was free shipping. And amazingly, I got them in four days by FedEx, no import duty because it's under the threshold of 135 quid, and it's not excise goods like tobacco or alcohol. So there's no import duty. So, you know, cheap enough to get them. As you can see, genuine Enfield parts. Now, look at those little beauties. Absolutely the bee's knees. Look at that. They are 100% the perfect ones. Look, a little lug for the bolt. There where you transfer your, um, I'll show you that bit in a minute. Um, you transfer your grommets, look. So, although I only ordered side panels, they also sent the two bits that fit on them, the lugs. So, that would fit in there. So it's the complete thing, actually. The same seller, I don't know if they've made a mistake, actually, um, lists them with or without the these brackets. They're great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on my bike and I'm going to use the ones that are on my bike to carry out the process of spraying them. Now you'll see in subsequent videos I'll post updates so this is part one and then I'll do you know x number of parts until you see the whole thing and at each point I'm going to explain what's involved. The paint I will say now Orange Crush is not available from Royal Enfield at all. In fact, they're very cagey about giving out the code, as a lot of manufacturers are, and it is not a single rattle can. I've used a paint supplier that we've used in my mother's paint and chemical business for years, and they are able to match paint and they know what's involved. So I will say now that the Orange Crush is a four stage process. The first point is preparation of the surface and then plastic primer. Then there is a base coat in an aerosol which is just silver. Then there is a top coat orange which according to Humber Paints which I shall put a link to when I do that video um, it, it's a very watery not much pigment pigment in that top coat, the orange. Then I've got a decal supplier. Now these decals here are under the lacquer and the backing bit of the decal in the, in the originals is black. So effectively it doesn't uh, allow the color of the paint to come through because it, adds, it actually is black and you can see they're under the lacquer look. They're lovely, these panels. Now, there is a decal supplier on eBay that I've just bought two decals from, but he supplies them with 
a clear background expressly for that purpose so they can go on another colour and show through. Because these would have a black bar on them if you use, you know, even if you could get them. So I'll put a link <clears throat> when it comes to each stage of where I got the decals from. And I will also put a link to the paint supplier and the paint codes as well for those people daring enough to give it a go, like me. Worst case scenario, I'm going to balls it all up. And if I do, I'll take it off with thinners or something and start again. But I've got um, a 400ml tin of plastic primer, 400ml of the base coat, 400ml of the top coat and 400ml aerosol of the... I'm going to use acrylic lacquer. So we'll see. I mean, these are fantastic panels. I'm going to put a link to those now because at this point of the video, um, that's relevant. So they're, you know, they're the real McCoy. And, you know, I'm really pleased that they, they also included these. You know, that's really good. And they just are held on with three screws, look. It hasn't come with the screws, but then, you know, they're not difficult to get. Or I could use the originals. I mean, these are fantastic. And I think for 40, 48 quid, um, you know, you'd never get Japanese parts for that. So I'm really pleased. They are the real thing. Lovely. So I'm going to use my old ones because these are far too nice and shiny to start putting sandpaper on. So that's the end of this intro, as it were, to this process. It might be quite daring. I might mess it up. I'm going to be honest if I do. And my next plan would be a seat with a tail fairing on it that covers the passenger seat. I've been looking at those and I found a supplier in India again, genuine re spares but i want to spray that orange too so i'm gonna this is the first stage see if i can make a reasonable job of the side panels but these are great so i'll put a link and this title will be part one and then we'll gradually work our way through if anybody's interested you can see each stage i'll be cracking on with those tomorrow i think my plan is to leave the brackets black i'm not going to touch them just the side panels and I think it might make the bike look pretty good. Well, that's the theory, if I get the paint right, and it's a question of taking, taking my time with it. So keep looking and I'll post the parts as I go along. In the meantime, stay safe, ride safe, like we all do. And I'll speak to you again.